Good day everyone. So we will now discuss the pre-lab for experiment 4, the second condition of equilibrium. Now the objectives of this experiment is to determine the factors upon which the moment of a force depends and how moment of forces balance each other. Second, to determine the two requirements for the meter stick to be in equilibrium and use them to calculate the forces acting at the pivot. So, uh, let's continue the discussion of torque and the second condition of equilibrium. Hopefully, you remember what we have discussed in experiment 3. So, if you didn't remember it, please go back to the pre-lab of experiment 3 before proceeding here in the pre-lab for experiment 4. Okay? We have discussed a meter stick in a pivot. Okay? So, this time, we will now place this meter stick and there is a pivot at one end. Okay? So, definitely this meter stick will tend to turn clockwise now the torque here is not equal to zero because uh, the our system is turning clockwise now if we will place this meter stick against the wall so we will connect it with a hinge so that is a hinge and definitely this will also turn into a clockwise direction so that is the clockwise direction so this will be the pivot and this is the clockwise direction and the torque here is not also equal to zero because uh, the tendency of our meter stick is to turn clockwise uh, our goal for today is to determine the second condition of equilibrium so how can we set this uh, system into an equilibrium if there is a weight of the meter stick and this meter stick tends to turn clockwise okay so what are we going to do to make this equi in equilibrium? So, based on the second condition of equilibrium, the summation of torque is equal to torque counterclockwise minus torque clockwise should be equal to zero. So, it means there should be two forces counteracting to each other to make this in equilibrium. So, here we have a force of weight. So, this weight will make our system turn clockwise. So, that is the clockwise. So, there should be another force that is counteracting this force. And that should be in the other direction which will make this system uh, turn counterclockwise. So, that will be another force. Okay. So, what we're going to do here is we have to place a string in this meter stick so that is the string so the other end is on the wall and the other and the other end of the string or the rope is at the end of the meter stick but this is uh, the other end can also be placed in any anywhere here in the meter stick if there is a string there is now another force which is what we call the tension so this tension is the force that will counteract the weight of the meter stick to make the system balance or in equilibrium aside from tension and the weight there are also other forces that is present in our system so let's review first what are the other forces that might affect our system i have here two uh, setup so here i have a box okay that is hung on a ceiling and i have a box the man on the top of on the top of the table or any surface okay so boxes have mass so therefore they have weight or the gravitational force and this one also have a gravitational force because this has a mass okay in this diagram so the box is hung on the ceiling using the rope so therefore there is another force here that will counteract my weight or the gravitational force because this follows the first condition of equilibrium in which the summation of forces along y should be equal to zero or else uh, the box will be accelerating downward okay so there should be another force that is counteracting this one to make this in equilibrium so that is the tension okay so the force that is present if there is a rope chain or string that is tension okay so here so since this is uh, the box on the surface or on the table is also in equilibrium so the summation of forces here along y should be equal to zero so since there's a weight there should be another force that is counteracting this gravitational force and definitely that is not a tension because there is no rope or string here so what is counteracting here so that the box will not accelerate downward is the force 
due to the surface and that is what we call the normal force it is always uh, perpendicular to the surface so that is the direction of the normal force okay and this normal force usually is equal to the gravitational force in this uh, case of a flat surface now there is box okay has a tendency to slide to the right so therefore there might be a force that is counteracting that sliding and that is what we call friction Friction, the definition of friction is it is a force that always opposes to the sliding and parallel to the surface. So, if this is the direction of the sliding, okay, so the friction is on the opposite side. And if this is the surface, our force is parallel to the surface. So, these are the common forces that we will use in mechanics, okay? So, what? let's go back to our problem. So, so other than the weight and the tension and i place the angle here. so the other forces uh, present in our system is the wall okay the force of due to the wall and that is what we call the normal force okay so that is a uh, normal force is always perpendicular to the surface so since this our surface is in vertical position so therefore our wall our normal force will be on this direction okay so it's counteracting the force of our meter stick which is later on we will see that that is due to the tension of the wire that is horizontal another force that is present is because the meter stick has a tendency to slide downward there is another force that is what we call the friction okay so if the meter stick will tend to slide downward friction will counteract that sliding and that friction is in an upward direction is the other two forces that is present in our system but generally they are not called normal force or friction they are called fx for the normal force and fy for friction or fx is also called as horizontal force while fy is also called a vertical force okay on the hinge okay we're talking about forces on the hinge so these are the other four these are the four forces that is always present in a problem where there we have a meter stick that is hung through a rope on against the wall okay so if there is a mass here so definitely there is another force uh, present in our system but in our case there is no mass so we will stick here now in this type of problem usually what we're looking for is what is the tension okay in the rope and what is the fx and what is fy so that is always the question now if we will go to find uh, tension since it's in an angle okay since it is in an orientation that is in diagonal position so we have to use the angle so that we can get the component of the tension in that case that will be this one so we have to get ty and tx so if we will go back to our what we have learned before so ty is equivalent to the opposite of the angle so that is uh, ty is equivalent to t sine theta while tx is at the adjacent of the angle so that is tx is just equal to tension times cosine theta we will look in this system we have now five forces so we have the weight of the meter stick tx ty fx and fy so since we are going to discuss first what is the second condition of equilibrium or how to solve the second condition of equilibrium we will focus first on the forces that are in that are perpendicular to our meter stick so in that case uh, what will be left are okay so that will be fy that is perpendicular definitely to our meter stick the weight and ty Okay, so the next thing we have to think is if this will be the pivot, which of these three forces will make uh, our system turn? So it is as if there is a pivot here. Our knife edge is here and there's Fy. There is meter uh, weight of the meter stick and there is Ty. Okay, so if this is our pivot from our previous discussion, all forces that is acting on the pivot will not affect our system so therefore fy will be removed from our solution since our goal is to find the tension 
Okay, so that is the tension can be seen as Ty is equal to tension uh, sine theta. So we will use the second condition of equilibrium problem in which that is, okay, torque counterclockwise is equal to torque clockwise. That, is, that came from torque counterclockwise minus clockwise is equal to zero, okay? So in solving this one, we have to identify all the lever arms of our two forces. So lever arm is identified as the distance from the pivot to the force. So this is the lever arm or the distance from the pivot to our meter stick. And this one, the D-string is the pivot, the distance from the pivot to our string. Okay, so the formula now, which of these two forces will move counterclockwise? So definitely that is Ty. So it will be Ty, this thing is equal to, and for the clockwise, that is weight of the meter stick times the lever arm of the meter stick. Since there is Ty here, so this is a component, we have to get the equivalent of this. So that will be T sine theta times the lever arm D string is equal to weight of the meter stick times the lever arm of the meter stick. And to find tension, will be so we will derive that one so it will be tension is equal to the weight of the meter stick times the lever of the meter stick divided by sine theta times the lever arm of the string so again the second condition of equilibrium is used to find the tension of the string okay now for Finding what is Fx or Fy, or this is the normal force and the friction, we will use the first condition of equilibrium. So the first condition of equilibrium is, states that the summation of forces is equal to zero. Since we have two kinds of forces, we have forces on x, so that is the summation of forces should be equal to zero. So in our system, it's also zero. And the forces on y is, should be also zero. So in our system, that is also zero because our system is not moving to the left or to the right or up and down okay so let's focus first on forces on x so since we have five forces here let's identify the forces on x so we only have two okay force fx and tx now fx will be positive because it's uh, the direction of that is to the right while ty will be negative because that is to the left okay so that is fx that is positive minus tx is equal to zero since we're looking for fx definitely this will be fx is just equal to tx because tx i just transpose tx on the other side and we have to find the equivalent of tx with an angle so that will be just fx is equal to t cosine theta so that is now the value for fx for Fy, okay, in the case of Fy, we will just, uh, what we have here in the diagram are the forces along Y, okay? So here in this case, we have three, okay? We have three forces along Y. And all forces that are going up are positive and all forces that are going down are negative. So therefore, our formula is Fy, that is up, positive, plus Ty, that is also going up, positive, minus, weight of the meter stick since we know we can solve ty from our previous uh, solution okay so from number one we know what is tensions our only problem here will be fy so fy is equal to weight of the meter stick so i, I transpose meter stick on the other side so it will become positive and I will transpose Ty on the other side that will be negative. So weight of the meter stick minus Ty. Since Ty is in this form, we have to replace this with its equivalent, which is minus T sine theta. So the final formula for solving Ty is weight of the meter stick minus T sine theta. Okay, so this is the general example for the first condition and second condition of equilibrium in this type of system let's try to answer this problem okay uh, a 75 kilogram block is suspended from the end of the 100 newton beam if the angle is equal to 30 degrees what are the values of tension as well as the horizontal and vertical forces on the hinge the length of the beam is one meter so 
this uh, there is a little bit difference of this problem from our previous discussion because there is a mass so if we will go back from our previous discussion we will use the second condition of equilibrium in finding the tension and we will use the first condition of equilibrium to find the horizontal and the vertical forces if we will identify the forces from our problem so we have the tension we have the weight of the beam so that is the weight of the meter stick actually this is the same and the weight the hang mass okay which is uh, the hang mass here is a 75 kilogram block okay so again there are other forces aside from these three forces these are fx which is the normal force or the force of the wall and the friction or the fy so if we will now uh, we will get the components of the tension into tx and to ty because that our tension is also in in diagonal position so we have to get its components that is tx and ty and this is the angle so to find tension we will use the second condition of equilibrium and for that we are focus is forces along y okay so that will be ty weight of the beam and weight of the mass so these are now the lever arm so d mass is the lever arm of the hang mass the d beam is the lever arm of the beam from the pivot and the d string is the lever arm of the string from the pivot so we will have this formula so torque counterclockwise is equal to torque clockwise if we will look here if this is the pivot weight of the mass and weight of the beam will make our system turn into a clockwise direction while ty will make our system turn into counterclockwise direction is so for the clockwise that is torque of the mass and plus torque of the beam is equal to torque of the counterclockwise which is the string and the formula for torque is the force times its lever arm so that is weight of the mass the lever arm of the mass plus weight of the beam times lever arm of the beam is equal to ty so that is the force that is perpendicular to the meter stick to the beam times the d string since weight of the mass is not given so we have to solve this but the weight of the beam is in newton our formula is mass of uh, what is the mass times acceleration due to gravity times the lever arm plus weight, the weight of the beam times its lever arm is equal to the equivalent of ty is t sine theta times the lever arm of the string which is d string okay so let's derive this one to find tension so that is tension is equal to um, mass times gravity acceleration due to gravity times the lever arm of the mass plus weight of the beam times the lever arm of the beam divided by sine theta times the lever arm of the string okay so if we will identify now the given so the given r the mass of the block is 75 kilogram that its lever arm is 0.25 meters based on its position because that is the distance from the pivot to this position of the weight mass so that is 0.25 meters while for the beam that is 100 newton that is based on the problem and its lever arm is from the pivot to 50 cm so or 0 0.5 meters while for the tension that is the string so that is from the end here going to our ty so that is one meter because it says that the length of the beam here is one meter and ty okay is should be identified as t sine theta so we have to find what is the t and we know that angle is 30 degrees if we will substitute now all the given so this is 75 kilogram times 9.8 meter per second squared times 0.25 meter plus 100 newton times 0.5 meter divided by sine 30 times 1 meter so the answer of that is so 467.5 newton so that is now the tension of our string now to find fx and fy we will solve definitely we will use 
the first condition of equilibrium. And this is the formula for the first condition of equilibrium. The summation of forces is equal to zero. The summation of forces along x is equal to zero. And the summation of forces along y is equal to zero. If we will look here, this is our diagram, the whole diagram. So we have six forces acting on our system, but we are only going to focus first on forces along x. And there are only forces along x, so therefore, the summation of forces along x is equal to fx minus tx. So this one, fx minus tx is equal to zero. And we have to focus that fx is equal to tx is equal to zero, so that is fx minus the equivalent of tx is t cosine theta is equal to zero hence fx is just equal to t cos uh, theta and therefore since we already know what is tension so that is 467.5 newton cosine 30 our fx now is 404.87 newton which is also the normal force so we have now our fx okay so let's focus now on solving our fy so this is the system again before so we have six forces and if we will focus on forces along y we uh, what are left are fy ty weight of the mass and weight of the beam okay so what are the forces along y these are the four so forces that are going up are positive forces that are going down are negative so in that case the summation of forces along y are fy plus ty minus weight of the mass minus weight of the beam is equal to zero so that will be fy is equal to weight of the mass plus weight of the beam minus t sine theta and we know that these are the given so that is so tension is already solved the angle is 30 degrees we know the weight of the beam and we will focus on the mass but we can solve for the weight of the mass which is weight of the mass is equal to uh, mg uh, 75 kilograms times 9.8 meter per second square so that is 735 newton so let's substitute so that is the weight of the mass is 735 newton plus weight of the beam 100 newton minus 467.5 newton sine 30 so that will be the answer here is 233.75 newton and the answer for fy now is 601.25 newton this is also the answer for friction there are some cases that fy the answer for fy is negative okay so in that case our magnitude is just uh, is correct but our assumption for the direction of fy is in the opposite direction so instead of having fy as going up okay so based on the problem the friction or fy is going down or in a downward direction so let's go now to the procedure in the problem Okay, so the first thing you have to determine are the mass of the meter stick, what is the hang, what is the given hang mass, and where is the center or the position for the center of mass of the meter stick. So that is m meter stick, m of mass, and xo. So I explained already what is xo from our previous experiment, so hopefully uh, you remember that one. What is xo or the center of gravity of the meter stick? can see this in the video of the uh, experiment 4 in the first so this is the first setup that you will see in the video so there is a meter stick that is connected to a tension protractor and this is the string okay so the position of the string it is connected at this position it's not the end so you have to find out what is the exact position of our string and also the pivot it's not also the end it's in a certain position here kindly check in the video okay so this is the initial uh, setup so if we will this is now the second setup in which there is now a hang mass in this position okay so please verify this one the position of the hang mass in the video so here we have the weight of the mass or the actually this is the position if this is the position of our center of gravity so that is weight of our meter stick 
So that is the lever arm of that is DO. While for our mass, that is the weight of the mass and the lever arm of that is D mass. While for the string, sits in a the string is connected in this position. So that is the distance of the string from here going to the pivot, which is D string. So that is the lever arm. And please do not forget to read the angle. Okay. And the tension, you have to read this based on the video. Okay. So you have to get that what is tension and what is the angle based on the video. Okay, so let's answer now for the table A. Now, the angle and the tension, again, you can see this in the video, okay? And you have to solve Ty, so this is how to solve Ty. What, so T sine theta, you also have to solve for Tx, that is T cosine theta. And for the distance from the pivot to the string, so you have to follow the diagram. So what is this three? What is the D mass and what is the DO? So that is all the data here in the white portion are all based on the video that you will be watching after this uh, pre lab. Okay, for table B, mostly in the table B are computations. So the torque of the hang weight about the pivot or the torque mass, you can compute it using this one. Okay, while well, for the torque of the meter stick you can compute this one using this okay and for this thing you can solve it using ty times this thing so again ty is already solved in table a so you will use that to solve the torque of the string now uh, since there are three torques here you have to identify on your own by which of these three will make our system turn counterclockwise and which of these three will make our system clockwise so the the torques all the torques that is that are clockwise you have to add if there are two or more counterclockwise you also have to add here the torque clockwise and the torque counterclockwise should be almost equal to each other now you have to get the average of this so this is how to get the average you have to add the two values divided by two you will get the average now for the percentage difference this is the formula so that is torque counterclockwise minus torque clockwise so divided by the average so whatever your answer here is just the same here absolute so it means it's always positive okay whatever your value here it's always positive times 100 and that will be your percentage difference and for table C, lastly, we will now solve for Fx. So for Fx, this will be solved, okay? So I already taught you how to solve Fx and Fy. So please use that to find what is the value of Fx and Fy, okay? Now for the magnitude of the pivot of the force, you will just you will use Pythagorean. So that is F is equal to the square root of Fx squared plus Fy squared. And that will be your answer here, okay, in Newton. And for the angle of the pivot force, you will use the arc tangent. So, equal to theta is equal to arc tangent. Fy, whatever your value here, divided by the fx, and that is your theta. And at the end of this uh, class, you have to submit page 56 and page 57. And you have to answer the analysis conclusion and the four questions at the end of, our, of your lab report. Okay, now again, you have to attach another band paper for the computation of all the solutions you are going to use here. Okay, so hopefully this is clear and thank you.